Hello, welcome to Do It Yourself with Wayne. Today we're going to talk about how to build racks like that uh, to make it a lot easier to move your firewood around. Um, years ago, 25, 30 years ago, I'm not really sure, uh, I heated my house with firewood and uh, I found I was moving my firewood at least five or six times before it actually ended up in the stove. I started building racks like this and I cut that to maybe two times. Uh, I would take the rack down to the woods when I was going to cut firewood. I'd cut it, stack it on the rack, pick it up with a tractor, take it and stack it behind the barn, or set the rack behind the barn. I had multiple racks like this. When I needed wood at the house, I'd just take my tractor, go pick up one of these racks, take it to the house, set it beside the back door. When I needed wood in my stove, I would just open the back door, get a piece of wood and put it in the stove. It saved me a tremendous amount of manual labor, and I was a lot younger then. So these days, having racks to stack my firewood on saves me a lot of manual labor, and I'm going to show you how to build your own. Okay, here's a basic design. Um, I started building these things, like I said, 25, 30 years ago, and uh, I had never seen one when I started doing this. And originally, I used a pallet at the bottom. I take a pallet, cut it in half, put two befores, two two befores on either end, come up the side, one before, one with two, whatever I had across the top, to keep them from spreading out. A little bit of something here and at the bottom, keep them from spreading out this way. And that basically is all there is to it. Uh, if you see this this carry all that I got from my little John Deere. At the time, I had a Ford tractor, the Ford 1910. I had a very similar carry-all for it. And what I noticed was, with using the pallets at the bottom, it worked very well. But these carry-alls, you know, the rails are like this high. And sometimes it's hard to get those rails to go in the pallet properly without bumping and causing issues. So I started building them like this instead of using a pallet. But you can do it either way. It works just as well either way. And you know, you can adjust the adjustments, the sizing to whatever suits you. I would warn you not to get too high because these things can get a little wobbly, particularly if you go narrower. And um, so now we're going to proceed with showing you how we build this thing. Okay, to start with, I'm on, I got two 10 foot two by fours that are treated. I like treated because the, the feet are going to be in the ground a lot. I don't want them to rot off. Uh, treated is not that much more than non-treated anyway, so uh, we're going with that. I got marks here at halfway. I'm going to cut them in half. That'll give me the four uprights that I need, two for each end. Alright, let's cut these off. All right, there's our four uprights, cut to the same length. Now, for the cross member that goes at the bottom, that the wood will actually be sitting on, I have used two befores there in the past and it works fine. Um, I've got some old two by sixes, so I'm gonna cut those for those pieces at the bottom. Okay, I got these old two by sixes from where I was uh, replacing my front porch. Uh, they have been laying on the ground, they're wet, so they're hard to cut. But I'm going to cut a little bit off each end of them, just to get good clean ends. Then we'll cut the other end at four feet. Well, that wasn't as bad as I expected. Now 
I'll turn them around. Not because it really matters, just because it's like cutting on this end. I'm going to make this thing four feet wide. So I'll mark both pieces at four feet. And this is pretty wet on both sides. I should be able to see that good enough to cut it. Okay, that takes care of the bottom pieces that wood will actually be sitting on. Now I need pieces to go crossways at the bottom and at the top. I'm going to use these scrap pieces that I cut off the 2 by 6s uh, Not because I need a 2 by 6 but because it's what I've got. A 2 by 4 or even a 1 by 4 would work just fine for this. I'm going to cut these at 13 inches. The last ones I cut at 15. And that made the rack a little bit wide for some of my firewoods. I'm going to go a little bit narrower with this one and see how it works. So uh, I've already cut these, or marked these two pieces at 13 inches. So now I'm going to cut them off. go we've got two pieces of go crossways at the bottom I probably could split these in half and it would work fine but I don't think I'm gonna do that but I will need something at the top as well for spacing so now we're going to proceed with putting these pieces together and here's what I'm gonna do I got this upright and this upright is ones I'm working with right now with this piece of uh, two by six good lengthways and to space the 2x6 from the bottom of the 2x4 upright, I'm going to use a piece of 1x4 that gives me 3.5 inches to the bottom of the foot, which is right there. I'm going to use my square to make sure things are squared up. Alright, square. Still got 3.5 inches. And I got a pneumatic nailer, so I'm going to use it to pop some nails in here right quick. that gets that in. Now I'll do the same thing at the other end. Do the second one. I'll set it just inside here. This one will need to go here. Just for room on the workbench. Another two by six go across here. <coughs> set it there. Make sure it's squared up. Spacer for the bottom. These are three and a half inches from the end. Alright, there we are. We're squared up. This piece is squared to this, three and a half inches from the bottom. We're ready to nail this one. Stop my. Stop my. 
circular saw off on the ground, but it'll be all right. It's the wall. All right, do the other side. Takes care of the uprights. Now we gotta put the piece that goes here. To get our spacing between the uprights. A couple pieces at the top, and we'll be about done. Okay, now I've turned this particular upright upside down from the way it was. This is one of the pieces of two by six. I cut it 13 inches. I'm gonna put it right in here, and I'm gonna take my nailer. <coughs> pardon me, and nail it right there. Okay, got one more to do at the other end. A couple of nails here. I'll put a couple more nails in there later, but that's all I'm gonna do for right now. Now I gotta put this on the bottom, get the other piece on top of it, and I'll put some nails in it. Okay, now as often I do, I'm working by myself. I need something to hold the ends up so they're kind of squared up with the bottom. Cut a piece that should be about right to fit in here. I put that under here. And that might be a little bit wide, but it's close enough for, for starters. Then I put a couple nails here. Couple down there just for good measures. Alright, and I do the same thing at the other end. Alright, at this point we got the bottom part of this built. Now I'm going to slide it off my workbench, put this part on the ground, and uh, we'll finish up the top, just a couple pieces up there, and we'll be done. Now I'm going to cut this two by four to go across the top here to keep the top from spreading out when I put firewood in it. Uh, this is a two by four that I have that's old. Uh, normally I'd use like a one by four up here, something a little lighter, a little smaller, a little less expensive. Um, but I didn't have to buy this. It's some old wood that I already had. It's good enough for this purpose. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, I don't want to use the very ends. So I'm going to cut it here about the middle. And then I'll cut off a little off each end to get the two four footers that I need. So that's what I'm going to do now. both of these at four feet cut a little off the other end so I have good clean ends
And just as a side note, uh, for anybody that's interested, um, I am a fan of the Dewalt tools. I've got, I don't know, five, six, seven of these different things. Uh, and in future videos, I will be doing tool reviews on these 20 volt Dewalt uh, tools. Um, so if you're interested in seeing those, you might want to subscribe to my channel. Uh, there's also a bell you can ring if you want to uh, be notified when I do new videos. But uh, the tool reviews of these Dewalt 20 volt tools will be coming, hopefully not in a too far different distant future. Uh, certainly within you know a few weeks or a month. All right, now we got these things cut to four feet. We're gonna put them up here, like so. And just use the pneumatic nailer and nail them in place. Okay, got one more lengthways piece to put up there. Nail it in place. Get the other end. Couple of nails there. And we're almost finished. Okay, there's that at one end. Install this right here. Apparently a lot of air comes out the end of my nail gun there. Blew my hat right off my head. Didn't hurt anything, just blew my hat off. Okay, I did change my mind about going ahead and putting two before across the feet just for better stability now another thing it helps you with and one thing i found is when these things sit on the ground sometimes the feet will sink into the dirt some which makes it let gives you less space here for the forks of your your uh carry all to go under so uh we've got an extra two before here will give you a little more stability and also raise things up a little bit to make it easier to get your carry all under it so now i'm going to do that I guess my nail gun needs nails. All right, it should shoot some nails now. Cut the compressor off so you can hear me. Uh, but that's it. This thing is finished. There's nothing else that I plan to do to it. Uh, like I said, in years past, I've built numerous ones of these things, and they saved me a ton of manual labor moving my firewood around. Like I said earlier, this firewood came from a neighbor's house and he cut it a lot shorter than I would normally cut it. So I got to pick and choose the longer pieces to go on the bottom so they don't fall through.
Okay, I think I'm gonna let it go with that. Uh, this is green oak and uh, cherry. It's quite heavy, and I don't have a lot of ballast on the front of my tractor. So uh, I'm gonna stop here and go ahead and move this. Okay, so there you have it, a relatively easy rack to build, relatively inexpensive, something you can do yourself. And if you've got a small tractor, whether it be John Deere, Kubota, Mahindra, you know, Massey Ferguson, it don't matter. Small, com subcompact, compact, or something larger. As long as you've got some kind of a carry-all or front forks or something that you can move these pallets or these racks, it's a great way to save yourself a lot of manual labor. And it's something you can do yourself. It's not something you gotta go buy. It's not something that's gonna cost you a lot of money. You may have to go buy a little bit of lumber. You may have some scrap laying around that you can make it with. And like I said earlier, you can make the bottom, the base of it, out of an old pallet. Just cut it in half, put your uprights on either end, some pieces at the top, uh, and finish it out that way. But I like the way I did it better because I got a little bit more room for the forks of my carry-all to get under it and raise it up. So uh, I appreciate you visiting Do It Yourself with Wayne and um, if you want to see our future videos uh, click like on our channel. You can also click that little bell and you'll be notified when we upload new uh, videos. We're doing at least one or maybe two a week and we do have the uh, two reviews of the Makita, I mean not Makita but uh, Dewalt 20 volt uh, hand tools coming up fairly soon. So you might want to check those out as well. And uh, so anyway, we appreciate you visiting. Do it yourself with Wayne and we hope you have a great day.